now we're going with Praise Church in Beaumont, Texas, and we're making a video just to say thank you for thinking of us, caring for us, taking time out of your schedule to either send something or send people down so to help us get back on our feet in Southeast Texas. We are, we are so grateful, and we want to be able to express that gratitude to you by having everybody say thank you. We are right now at a park having church, Sunday in the park, and all of our people are ready to give you a great big Texas thank you. That's it. I couldn't remember when that ended. It's, it just goes on and on. So this is the church in Beaumont we reached out to and we have a relationship with in, in several ways. And, you know, after the flooding, we said, what can we do? And since we knew these people, they, they like some churches, kind of lost it all. You know, the, their whole church was flooded out. And so uh, we gave them an offering to help them rebuild. And we sent teams to help in the demolition as well as to help in the, some of their members' homes. So... This is our thank you, but this is your generosity. It's a thank you because of your giving, we can do things like this. Amen? Praise God. Amen. All right, as you can see, we're in a new uh, December's here. Hey, let's hear it up for December. Amen? One more month. This is awesome. I'm like Stephen. I, like I like this time of year, and I love Christmas. It's a great time, and we're going to focus on a, a new theme this month that we believe God's put in our hearts to share. I want to start with uh, John 8, if you would go with me there. John chapter 8, we'll, go, we'll jump around in a few verses in John. Uh, if you have a Bible, you, we'll have it on the screen. It's always good if you can follow along in your uh, device or your Bible, however you have your Bible. But <clears throat> let's go to John 8, verse 12. Familiar per passage to some. It says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Two words, the word light, and that's what we want to focus on this, year, this month. The word light. I am fascinated with the concept. Uh, I got into photography a few years back as a hobby. And uh, studied, studied, you know, when I get into something, I just study it. You know, whatever I'm doing, I just study it. And light's the, light's the thing with photography. If you have good light, you have a good picture. And I think it's the true with our lives. If you have good light, you have a good life. If you don't, you may not. In fact, you probably won't. And so Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So what does it mean when he says, walking in darkness? What does it mean to walk in darkness? He gives quite a bit of insight throughout the, the word on this. But here's one passage. He says uh, in John eleven ten, 10, he says, But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. Oh, I just find that so intriguing. You know, having light upon us and in us. And if we don't, we're in darkness. And what does it mean to be in darkness? We stumble. You ever been in a hotel room or a strange place? And you wake up in the middle of the night, and maybe the phone rings, or you go trying to go to the bathroom, whatever, and you just, just, you can't see your way. And so what happens? You bump into things. You stub your toe, you hit walls, or if you're afraid of doing that, here's how you do. You just, you just kind of like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not fun. And that's how, can I just say, I believe that's how many people are living. This is how we're living. We're just... Like that, right? Pastor Gary did a great job last week explaining how people do, that's how they do marriage. They don't, ah, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to ever get married. You know, uh, we'll, just, we'll just live together for a while. Or, or I don't know if I can make it in the future. You can't see where you're going. 
You, you've, you've, you've tripped over enough things. There's nothing worse than to keep tripping over things and you don't know how to fix it. And the only way to fix it is light. And I love this idea of light because I know what it means to be in darkness and I know what it means to be in light at a personal level. And I like light. Uh, Jesus said this in John 9. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now that's a good news and bad news thing. The good news is he's the light of the world. The bad news is he's only the light of the world as long as he's in the world. <laughs> now can, it's no surprise that Jesus drew the crowds he drew. <clears throat> because you say, well, hey, where are you going? I'm going to go hear this guy, Jesus. Well, why are you going to go hear him? Because he's the light of the world. The light of the world is going to be over here at a certain time in a certain place. Would you go hear him? If you knew the light of the world was going to be, say, at a certain time, say, 2 o'clock this afternoon, say, at a certain park or a certain building, Maud Cop, would you go hear him? Would you go be there? Would you go watch it? Would you go check it out? If you believe the light of the world was there. No wonder he drew crowds. I mean, what, what would happen if it were known? Think about this. If it were known, if you could tell people that at a certain place, at a certain time, if you go there, you're going to experience the presence of God. You're, you could have a miracle happen in your life. You're going to experience the literal presence of God. And a miracle could happen. And you will hear words that will go into the depths of your being. And they, will, they can change your life. They probably will change your life. What would happen? Of course the crowds came. Because that's what it means to be where the light of the world is. So that's the good news. That's what the light of the world does. It shines light in dark places. It does miracles. It changes us. When truth goes into dark places, amen, it changes you. Yeah. The good news is that. The bad news, he says, is as, it's only going to happen <laughs> as long as I'm in the world. And we know he left a long time ago. So where does that leave us? Is it like uh, Middle Earth where the time of man is coming to an end? <laughs> Sorry, Lord of the Rings reference. Thought it would help. Obviously not. Notice what Jesus says, Matthew 5. And many of you know this one. He says, you are the light of the world. Now he changes it from I to you. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I am passionate about us figuring out what this means. I really am. You go, I know what that means. I heard that when I was a kid. This little light of mine. <laughs> Amen? How many, know, how many heard that? I got this one, Pastor. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. Yes and no. I'm convinced there's a whole lot more than what we've seen is this. You know? For instance... Notice Jesus said there's two ways that the light shines. There's two different kinds, not in quality but in quantity, of the light shining. There's the lamp, which I believe is our individual witness. And then there's something called a city. Notice he says a city. So what is a city? It's a bunch of lights. It's a bunch of lights set together that express a bigger, brighter light than any individual light could ever express. And I want to talk about the city today because I believe that's the church. There's the individual witness and then there's the collective witness of God. And the collective witness of God is the church. Now I believe Jesus, here's the crazy thing, we've got to say this, in my opinion, Jesus is as popular as he's ever been. But a lot of people don't think they need the church. They say, well, I'm into Jesus, but I'm not into church. 
they don't understand Jesus. The Jesus they say they're into, they don't know about. And probably don't know. It's just an idea to them. Because if people say, well, I'm just following Jesus. Well, where are you following him to? Where is he taking you? Because he said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He didn't say the gates of hell won't prevail against you, Christian. He says the gates of hell won't prevail against us. A soldier can't win a war, but an army sure can. And so we need an army. That's the church. It's the church gathered. Individual light, the church scattered. But corporate light, the city, the church gathered. My wife's favorite, one of her favorite movies is a movie called First Night. And it's got a little romance and a little chivalry, so I can watch it, you know. And, you know, a little war happening, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's a King Arthur story, right? There's like, I was on a plane once and a, a PhD uh, student was in medieval literature, said there's over 400 King Arthur legends. So it's a, you know, this is one of them. And, and it's, um, you know, where the King Arthur, played by Sean Connery, pursues the queen, a woman to become her queen. So he, 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 he courts her and he invites her, the king invites the, the soon to be queen to his city. And there's a neat scene in the movie where she's traveling to the city and it, when she gets there, it's night and they come over a hill and they see Camelot and it's on this hill. It's a beautiful hill across a river and it's all lit up at night and she goes in and all the lights and the people are cheering and the candles are falling and it's just so cool. Look, it's a beautiful scene and it's, I think it's a great picture of what Jesus is trying to say here. That a city in the night, because the city matters most in the night. It's easy to find the light at the night if you're in a city, because there's a bright collection of lights, and that's what Jesus is after. He's after, in this earth, a place where people can, and this is a passion of mine, easily find Him. Now, I don't know if that, how you think about that, or if you think about that, but I think about it all the time. I, I pray all the time. I want your light to be so bright here, Lord, in this city that you've put us in. This area called East Texas. You know, this area, Longview's 80-something thousand. Kilgore's about 11,000 now. And, but the Great County's 125,000. And we have other counties that surround. So I think the MSA is 250,000. And um, I want, I want it, people to see you. I want your light to be bright, Lord. I think about this and I pray about it. And all of our labors and all of our efforts are toward that end. And, and, and what intrigues me about this passage, he said this. He said, now notice the language again. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. And why did he say that? The scripture comes alive for me because I'm always asking that question. Why did he say that? Why did he put that in the Bible? How many know God doesn't put anything in the Bible without a reason? And most of the time, the reason means there's a response he's asking of us. So what is our response to that statement? A city set on a hill. We don't have hills out here. In fact, we have more hills than I used to think we did because I started road cycling about a year and a half ago. And I figured, I found out we had hills. Yeah, I thought we were flat. I came from, we moved, years ago I lived in Northwest Arkansas, there's hills up there. But there's hills here. But there's not big hills. I don't think he means a literal hill. Here's what I think he means. I believe Jesus is saying, when he makes the statement, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. He is saying that there is a a commandment from God to the church that we need to be as bright and as prominent, as visible as we can. Far the opposite of what Satan tells people. Church is not important. You know, I'm into God, not organized religion. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. All those things that are not in the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the New Testament. See the the great prominence God gives to the church. And so what this tells me is, is I seek God and I pray and we plan as that we have to be the best we can be, guys. We have to be as bright as we can be. We have to be as loving as we can be. We have to be as fervent as we can be. We have to seek God for every way we can to extend, the, to make, people, make it, ourselves available to people. 
outreaches, and visibility. And I believe God has given us a chance as a church to do that as we head into the next year. About two years ago, we ha- we've had a relationship with Gateway Church for a long time. It's a great church in Dallas. It's huge. <clears throat> and they reached out to us and asked us to be in relationship with them. We love it, and we've just received so much from them. They're great. There's just so, so many things wonderful going on there. And, and so they sent some guys out, and uh, one of them came and preached for us about two years ago. And we connected with him. We talked. We met our staff together. And he said to me, he said, you know, you have a great church out here. It's, I love your church. He, he, tells, he tells me this all the time. He said, I love you guys. He said, you're full of life and energy. But I think your location's hurting you. I think if you were to have a, a, a second location in Longview, that you would reach a whole lot more people. And what they do, and many churches now across the country are doing this, is they stream like preach from one place and stream to various locations. And I heard about that. I didn't like it until I went and saw it. And I thought, you know, it it could work because the idea is one church, many locations, one voice. What is the Spirit saying to that church? That's what we believe. We believe you go to the church God puts you in because the Holy Spirit's speaking. Whatever He's telling the people who preach and teach there, they pray, they share, and it resonates with what God wants to say to you. So that keeps that unity happening. One church, two locations, three locations, whatever. So we said, okay. He said, go find a building like a grocery store and see if you can renovate it. And I said, well, that's okay. We, hadn't, we really hadn't thought of that. Let's, let's think about it. Let's pray about it. So we did. We prayed about it. We felt like that was from the Lord, counsel from the Lord. And so we started looking and looking and looking and looking. No grocery stores, no buildings, nothing that would work for us. So... Evidently, there's more buildings in Dallas than there is in Longview, you know? <laughs> so we just kept praying and looking and whatever, God, whatever, whatever. We're not married to anything but you, Lord. And so uh, a little while back, we were driving around for some other reasons, and I noticed there was a church at the juncture of Judson and Loop 281, and their sign had gotten really torn up looking, and they weren't fixing it. I'm thinking, I wonder if they're going to stay there. And so we drove by there, and they were setting everything up to move. And we walked in and says, yeah, we're, we're leaving. And they'd renovated this place. It was a movie theater and renovated it to be a church. And but it just wasn't working. So we talked to the leasing agent. Yeah, they're interested in leasing it to us. And uh, they wanted uh, a whole lot more than we wanted to pay. So we prayed about it and gave them our offer, and they took it. A lot, a good deal. <laughs> I mean, from, from terms of what it cost to rent, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was good. it was good for us. So, so we just prayed, guys. We felt led of the Lord to just, just take it. It's, it's, it's almost like it's moving ready, but we, it's, we needed it, we needed, it needs an update. So we prayed. We, we really waited on God and sought the Lord. We just felt like this was God. So we have secured a lease for a second location right behind the Olive Garden for, for three years. And that will be a second location for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So uh, we're excited, too. And so uh, we're in the updating process, and we may have a couple more volunteers days if you want to help. Just we'll send you emails on it. But it basically, it's, 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 a, it's about this size. We, we in, in one fell swoop, double our size, our, foot, our capacity, Double our, actually greatly increase our visibility and allows us, I believe, to be that city on a, on a higher hill. For the next phase, it's a rent, it's not buy. It gives us time to pray, accumulate funds for a more permanent facility, wherever that is. Could be here, could be somewhere else, we don't know. But we believe this is a God thing and we're excited about it. And so we'll be keeping you posted on that, what that looks like. In fact, I, I, I have, uh, I wanted to bring some pictures and I forgot just to show you the before and hopefully after, what the updates will look like. We have the, this monster sign. <laughs> it used to be a big movie theater sign. It's, it's so big that most signs haven't even been able to, they, it's new to them to quote something that big. It's well lit. So it will be prominent. And here's what this is going to do. This is going to make it much easier for you to reach the people you care about. For some of you, the location's going to be better. Now, some of you, this will be your location. Some of you, that'll be your location. 
We'll, you just have to pray and think what it, you, you, which one works for you. It won't matter where you are. Same worship, same ministry team, same anointing, same message. I think you're going to love it because you're going to have more options. And so it gives you a chance. One of the guys said, well, I live close here. Well, I said, well, come here. I said, nobody lives closer to this building than me except Raul. He lives closer than me by a few hundred yards, I think. But, he's, but I said, what about all the people way up north in Longview? We got one couple been driving from Hughes Springs for 10 years. And they come to the first service, and they're on time. <laughs> That's an hour and 15 minutes. And so they'll be able to bring more people. It's not just about us, guys. It's about the people that we haven't reached yet. Amen. Aren't you excited about that? Yes. They need to see our city. I love our city. Don't you think we got a good thing going on out here? That's right. But the problem sometimes, sometimes, it's just maybe a little bit too much out here. And so being there and here expands our reach. We don't have to leave anybody here, but we can go there at the same time. That's what I, right now, right now, that's what I love the most about this next step. Is that we can be in two places at the next season of our church's life. At the same time. So, so pray with us about it. You know, we'll, I, I, I hope to have some more photos next week to kind of show you a visual. This will help us bring this city of lights that we are to our city. And that's what I'm excited about the most. Now I want to give you one more verse before we close. And uh, it's in Isaiah 60, um, verse 1. I love this verse. This is a prophetic voice from Isaiah. He said, Arise, shine. Notice the language here. Arise, shine. Because here's the challenge. Uh, this Matthew 5 thing has riveted me. Let your light so shine. You know we're commanded to do that. Right? Right? <laughs> Let me start over. You know we're commanded to do that, right? right. All right, that's better. So what does that mean? How do we do it? I'm challenged with this. In this process of praying over this verse, this passage, I believe I've gotten some real powerful insight I'm excited about. I'm going to share next week about your light, your personal light. How do you let that shine better? How many want to figure that out more? How can I let my, my light shine better? I believe God's given me some insight. And I believe God's going to give you some insight in this process as you give yourself to this process. At a corporate level, we're saying, how do we let our light shine better? We believe this is the next step. This is just one of many steps that we're going to do. We pray all the time for this city. We pray, God, show us, show us how to be a blessing to this city. We've got ideas we're working on on how to do that. How to help people. How to empower people. That's why we started a marriage family ministry two years ago. Because we want to put tools in place to empower marriages. I want to, there's other areas, other groups of people we want to empower that we haven't been able to do. Or haven't, have, just haven't been able to really, just the bandwidth. But we believe that's going to happen soon. So how do we let our light shine? He says, arise, shine. Look at this. For your light has come. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You see, again, we get, we get this little religious mindset, this false humility. I don't want anybody looking at me. Just look at Jesus. Here's the secret, guys. They have to look at you to see him. Amen. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. He was talking about his imminent departure, which has happened. So now... To see him, they have to see us. They need to see it. this, the city of lights. How many know you can't see a king without the kingdom? There's a portion of Jesus that they, that they cannot see through one person, no matter how amazing that one person is. They have to see the gathering of lights, the Camelot, if you will. So he says this. He says, for the Lord... The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Have you figured that out yet? That God's glory is not just something floating around, but it's on you. 
It's on us, you corporate and you individual. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Now, how many of you grieve over the darkness? You don't know you are, but you are. You are every time you gripe and holler at the news. And Congress. And some of the craziness that's coming out of some of our other institutions, like some of our higher education institutions right now. Right? And the media. See, we grieve over the darkness. But we are not to be surprised at the darkness. He said, darkness will cover the earth. Darkness will cover the earth. Deep darkness the people. But the Lord (laughs) will arise over you. So that's the contrast that we must understand. His glory will be seen upon you. Just a, just a spoiler alert, the light of God is the glory of God. It is His, it is his, his very presence and, and, and revelation shining into our lives. It will be seen. Do you see that? God, God has ordained this. That you just not feel it. That's good to feel it. But it's seen. And when it's seen, He's glorified. And here's something else that happens. The Gentiles shall come to your light. Oh, I just want them, Pastor. I just want them to come to His light. They can't come to His light if they don't come to your light. So we all have to have an individual light. And we all have to have a corporate light. One of the reasons years ago, I've always been very evangelistic as a Christian. And I realized I could not be properly evangelistic. Listen to me now. I could not be properly evangelistic without a healthy, powerful local church. You can't. You can talk to them about Jesus. They can see some of Jesus in you. Hopefully they will. But then you have to be able, you have to be able to take them to a place where they can see Him. In all His glory, in all His attributes. They can't see all of Him through you, but they can see all of Him through us. So if, even if you don't think you need a church for yourself, which you do, <laughs> you need a church if you're going to be a force in this earth. You need a church if you're going to matter. You need a church if you're going to be a person that can have, cares about bringing other people to the light of Jesus. He says His glory will shine upon you. And here He means, I believe, both individually and collectively. And as a result, I love this. This is my prayer. The Gentiles, the people in darkness, shall come to your light. And kings, people of influence even, people of influence, will come to the brightness of your rising. I remember when I first saw this years ago as a new Christian. And I was grieved because once you're out of the dark, you see the dark. And you go, oh, it's bad. You know, I just got out of it. It's bad. (laughs) People are messed up. You're like, I was one of them, you know, last year. He said it would come. And he said it would get darker. And in the last... 40 years I've been serving Jesus, it's gotten a lot darker. Every institution, government, higher education, media, journalism, it's darker. He said it would, but it's also going to get brighter in the city of lights, the city on a hill. It's going to get brighter. We need to be where it's brighter, amen? And the darker it gets out there, guys, guess what? The brighter this is going to be. Here's my question and we'll pray. How many of you want to be a part of something? How many want to help this city get brighter? How many of you say, that's my prayer. I'm with you, Pastor. Let's get, it. let's get this light as bright as we can. All right, let's stand. Let's stand and let's pray. Lord, we want that. We cry out to you, Lord. This brightness, we go, we're going to a place. If we're saved, we're going to a place 
that will one day be so bright we'll need a new body to see it. We're going to a place that is one day, God, that there will be no need of the sun. There will be no night ever. We're looking forward to that moment. But now in this time, in this present place on this earth, in, in this part of the earth called East Texas, we pray that you make this city as bright as you can make it. And each one of us, God, I thank you for all the people who serve and give and attend faithfully. I pray, God, that you help all of us continue to do our part, Lord, and show us as we come into the new year next year, how can we even do that better, Lord? In Jesus' name, Lord, let this city be that bright city. Let us reach new areas for you. Let us reach new people for you. Let us find new ways to help people. Let us find new ways to bless people. Raise up new laborers in this church. New leaders in this church, God. Who can reproduce themselves. Who can shine light into dark places, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said... Amen, amen, amen. All right, God bless you guys. Our prayer team is coming. We're going to roll out more information as this comes up and we know more. We'll be doing it soon, though. God bless you.